we're looking at the heating curve for water and ice and steam. So let's say we have a sample of 50 grams of ice and let's say that ice starts at negative 10 degrees Celsius and we're going to heat this all the way to 110 degrees Celsius. So we're going to see a gradual increase in temperature until it starts to melt at zero degrees Celsius then we're going to see that the temperature remains constant during that melting because we're overcoming intermolecular forces of the ice. Once all the ice is melted, we're going to see an increase in temperature again because we're just allowing the molecules to move faster and faster. And then at 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to see a transition again for uh, boiling. And then we're going to not see an increase in temperature because we're overcoming the intermolecular forces again as water is becoming steam. And then we're going to see an increase in temperature as the steam gets heated. So we have a bunch of values here to be looking at. Latent heat is uh, when we are, have a transition. So we have a latent heat of fusion. So at this point, uh, we are going to be at uh, 334 uh, right here. So this is the 334 uh, joules per gram. When we're warming up, the ice, we have a specific heat of ice there, so that we're going to be using the 2.093 here. When we're warming up the water, we're using the uh, specific heat of water there. And then when it boils, we'll be using the latent heat of vaporization, which is 2260. So this is the energy going in just to boil it. So this is the energy going in to melt it. And then when we are heating the steam, we have 1.996 there. So that's, that's why we're heating the steam there. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so for 50 grams of ice, when we're warming it up, we're going to be using the specific heat of that. So the Q for that is going to equal the mass, which is 50, multiplied by the specific heat of ice, which is 2.093. And then we're going to do the temperature change on that. T2 minus T1. Well, T2 is 0, and then minus a negative 10 for T1. Okay, when we multiply all that out, we do get 1,046.5 joules. Now, at the point where we're melting, that's just latent heat. My Q for that, I'm just going to take 50, and I'll multiply that by... 334 and the unit for that is joules per gram and the unit for the 50 is grams and then the grams will cross off okay and that's going to give us 100 let's see that's going to give us uh, 100 or 16,700 16,700 joules okay now we're heating this from zero degrees to all the way up to 100 degrees so now i'm going to be using the q equation it would be 50 grams i'm going to multiply that by the specific heat of water and of course multiply by the temperature change 100 minus zero okay and that gives us 20,920 joules 20,920 joules now we see that the uh, it's leveling off because we are boiling the water now, so we have to overcome those intermolecular forces. So the Q for that is just going to be 50, and we are going to multiply that by, okay, the latent heat of vaporization, which is 2,260. Okay, and that equals 100 or I'll just say it, 113,000 joules. Okay, 113,000 joules. And now we're going to heat the steam. So we're going to use the equation Q equals 50. I'm going to use now the 1.996, the specific heat of steam. And I'll multiply that by the temperature difference again, 110 minus 100. Okay. And that one comes out to be 998 joules. 
Uh, we add all of those up together and round it correctly, more or less, and we'll get 153,000 joules. To take 50 grams of ice from negative 10 degrees all the way up to 110 degrees Celsius.